Hey everybody, I just wanted to give a quick introduction because this type of video is really new for me, but it's something I've been interested in trying for a really long time, so figured I'd give it a shot. So first of all, my name is Nick Volfaro. I'm an animator from New Jersey, and I currently work at a TV production company in Philadelphia. Like I mentioned, I've been really interested in trying to make some video reviews for a while because that's the kind of YouTube content that I personally watch anyway, and wanted to combine it with my background in animation to make this. So, I'll talk about the movie I watched, and you'll see a time lapse of my art process to draw and animate the thumbnail from scratch. Part of the idea, too, is I wanted to make something accessible to other artists that doesn't require you to stare at the screen the entire time, and you can, like, look away or work on a project without feeling like you're missing all the content. But for the people who do want to watch, you get to see my entire process from start to finish. So I think that's kind of cool. This video is sort of a pilot of that concept. All right, so let's get started with the premise and basic info. I'm not going to list the plot beat for beat. I, I want this to be like the audiobook version of a movie. Uh, but this review will contain spoilers. I'm just going to kind of throw them in whenever they're relevant. But uh, that's just kind of the general warning for the entire video. But anyway, let's get to Doom Annihilation. Doom Annihilation follows protagonist Joan Dark, literally Joan Dark, the lieutenant among a group of marines assigned to a UAC research facility on one of Mars's moons. The facility is researching teleportation between Mars and Earth to benefit future space travel using portals to hell. The Marines are assigned to this otherwise boring task because Joan got them all in trouble by botching a mission with an infamous terrorist. Obviously, because this movie is called Doom Annihilation, the mission isn't as boring as expected when the portals backfire, unleashing demons on the research facility. Now Joan and the Marines must fight for their lives against an army of hellspawn in space. The movie is written and directed by Tony Giglio. This is the second movie adaption of the Doom video game series, following an unrelated first attempt in 2005. Giglio apparently pitched Doom Annihilation to Universal in 2015, but they declined. However, the following year in 2016, the Doom video game series was rebooted with the appropriately titled new entry, Doom, dubbed Doom 2016, which was a massive hit, and Universal reconsidered. The movie was put into production and later released direct to DVD in October 2019, and then to Netflix in December 2019. So with all that information out of the way, you kind of got the idea of the story, let's move on to the actual review with writing and plot. Alright, so I'm going to have to get this out of the way pretty quickly because it's going to be tough to do the review if I don't mention this otherwise. Uh, I did not like this movie. Um, so I was bored for pretty much 90%, uh, which is like the worst thing a movie can be. Uh, it's it's worse than being bad. It was boring, which is never the feeling you should get from a Doom movie. I'll also just mention that I'm not the biggest Doom fan in the world. Uh, I've only played the 2016 game and really loved it. So I'm not coming at this as like a hardcore fan of the series, but I have like the basicest basic understanding. So if I get any information slightly wrong, you can just let me know in the comments. I'm not pretending like I'm an expert. I'm just saying I'm familiar with the franchise. So yeah, so the first half of this movie is beyond boring. If I had to sum up what most of this movie was, it's really just walking through hallways and exposition uh, and then like an occasional jump scare to make sure you're still awake for the exposition that they're saying. This is like the kind of script that like you write for like a first draft of like your first time writing. I was watching this on Netflix. So like throughout the movie, I just kept yelling at the screen like stop talking, just kill demons already. Because again, like they don't kill nearly enough demons for this to be considered an appropriate Doom film. Uh, it's just these characters that are walking and talking and just saying exactly what's on their mind. If there was any plot that needed to be explained, it was done through dialogue between characters to character. And it was like the most boring thing. And I think this is such an interesting thing for like any screenwriter to take a look at and just like pull apart. You can just stare at this as an example of like what not to do. And that's why I'm saying that the writing is just so tacky. The main character's last name was Dark. Like Joan Dark. Because 
Joan of Arc was listed as like one of the inspirations for having a female protagonist for this movie. And Joan Dark is just the French pronunciation of Joan de Arc. Th- that's literally a joke from <laughs> from Clone High. <laughs> Even if you don't get the reference of this character being inspired by Joan of Arc. Like, what? why is that even relevant? Because she's a female protagonist? It's stuff like this that kind of shows where the writing is coming from and, like, why it's so weak. Again, this is, like, stupid, basic stuff. But a character literally talks about retiring after this mission and going home. Like, everybody knows that, right? That when a character is two days away from retirement, they're the one that's going to die. Like, it's a trope for a reason. And... To literally no surprise, this character dies. But the worst part about his death is that, honestly, I don't even remember when it happened. Uh, This character was so boring that he just blended in with everybody else. So at some point, he just wasn't there anymore. And I was like, oh yeah, that guy was days away from retirement. And at some point, he died. Like, not only do they use the trope of days away from retirement they don't even use it for any sort of, like, emotional weight because I didn't even realize he was dead. Guys, this is so not great. (laughs) Beats, all the beats fell flat. Again, this is kind of contributing to how boring the movie was. Any attempt at, like, making the audience feel something just fell flat one after the other. But I will kind of run this back a little bit and talk about the stuff I did like about the writing and stuff that I did find interesting. The last 10 minutes of the movie actually kind of embrace being a Doom movie. There's like slow-mos and actually killing demons. Like that's what the whole movie should have been. Like the last 10 minutes should have been the whole movie. Uh, I had a lot of fun with the BFG 9000. Just any reference to the source material was a lot of fun. I will just mention the fun stuff was fun, but the humor in this movie all fell flat like everything else. Uh, It was really dumb and out of place. Specifically, one of the comic relief characters was the pilot. He was like a dorky sort of like truck driver kind of guy who like had a sort of weird relationship with his ship's AI. Like, I guess they were talking like they were in a relationship. It could have been written more nuanced and a little bit more fun. uh, But really, anything he said was sort of like a sitcom joke that just nosedived. Uh, It really was a mood killer for what was going on. So uh, that's just something I wanted to mention that the fun stuff, the stuff where they actually had fun with the source material, that was fun. But fun and humor aren't the same thing, and the humor definitely fell flat. So, that is the writing. Let's move on to characters and acting. So, if the writing wasn't obvious enough, the characters are beyond flimsy. It doesn't help that Joan's actor has absolutely no charisma and is useless as a lead character. Uh, I will draw attention in particular to her acting when she was in Hell. It wasn't great. She acts like a lady walking through CGI Hell. She's just kind of staring blankly. She doesn't know what's going on. There are demons that are popping up in front of her face, and she just gives the same blank expression. So um, Joan's actor wasn't really impressive. Uh, But I'll also kind of talk more about Joan as a character. Uh, She has a backstory where her mom died of cancer, I guess, and she keeps having flashbacks to it. And also the whole plot was set in motion because Joan got everybody in trouble and got sent to Mars. But like both these facts, like both these major things about Joan's character just keep being referenced to without real purpose or stake in the plot itself. The writers just wanted to make like this troubled tortured character so they like gave her this mom backstory and like this all being her fault but they don't really do anything interesting they just keep mentioning it and it's just really boring so it it definitely doesn't aid her character in any way i guess this section is going to be kind of short because i don't have much to say about all the other characters because they all were awful it was kind of set up as being like an ensemble cast because joan is among all these different marines that she's working with but i don't remember a single one of their names i don't even remember her ex-boyfriend like the scientist the one that survives the longest with her i don't even remember his name he was an important character i knew what he looked like 
yet I had no idea anything about him or what his character's name was. All the other Marines are totally useless, nobody characters. Again, there's that character who says he's going to retire soon, and then he dies. Like, one character is, like, slightly brash, and he has, like, an accent. But it's sort of like, it's dumb stuff like that. I don't know their names. I don't know anything about them. They get killed off in unceremonious ways. Like, they'll just get eaten by a zombie or something, or they'll be killed by an imp. And then the characters are like, oh, no, he's dead. And it's like, I don't care. I don't know any of these characters. Um, I will say, though, my favorite character, despite everything I just said, was the main antagonist, Dr. Betruger. He definitely stole the entire show for me. Like, his writing wasn't much better than anybody else's, but the actor just had so much charisma. He, he was playing, like, a B-movie mad scientist character. He was really, like, hamming it up, and I think that was just so fascinating, and it was just so much fun. I think that's what this movie really needed, was just more fun to it. It really should have been, like, a B-movie based on a video game, but instead it was just a really bad, like, serious attempt at interpreting demons on Mars, you know what I mean? Uh, but I think Betruger's actor, I really loved him, uh, even with how horrendous the script was. There, there were points where he was saying, like, some ludicrously bad, stupid dialogue, but I, I gave it a pass because he was just doing, he was just giving it his all in the silliest way possible. So, Dr. Betruger stole the show. I would have preferred if he was the main character and not Joan. I would have loved that way more, but whatever. But anyway, let's move on to directing, editing, sound, and effects. This whole thing felt directed like a student film or like a fan film. Everything just felt really cheap, but I can't imagine the budget was... <laughs> very high at all, especially since it went direct to video. I think they kind of knew what they were in for. I think this film would have been a lot more charming if it was portrayed as like a fan film. Like if, if a fan made this and it was like 20 minutes long and it was only like the last 20 minutes, I think that this could have been a great short fan film. But instead as a direct to DVD feature film, it just felt really cheap, really out of place. Because I, I feel as though, because they went in the Doom 3 direction, we didn't get, like, the power fantasy aspect of, like, an action movie from this, but we also didn't feel as powerless as, like, an effective horror movie would be. Uh, in terms of cinematography, boring. I mean, I, I don't really have much to report there. Uh, they break the 180 degree rule sometimes. It's like basic movie making is like don't break the 180 degree rule. Um, also, in terms of direction, I guess I'll say that the first couple minutes had a little bit of potential. Like they felt a little bit more artsy than what the rest of the film was. Uh, it kind of left you guessing a little bit. It kind of hinted that it was going to be cool. But they, they really dropped the ball after like first 10 minutes, I guess. I don't have much to say about the sound effects, but there was horrible ADR at some points. ADR is audio that you record later. So there was one character. It was a woman with blue hair. Again, I don't know her name. Uh, but this character with blue hair, all of her dialogue was poorly ADR'd. So all the characters would sound the same. They would sound like they were recorded in the same place. Except for this lady sounded like she had a robot voice that she recorded. And they just put over all of her dialogue. In terms of effects, I think, honestly, they could have been worse. Like, I think I could have imagined a worse version of the effects they were kind of like cw level um i'm talking like the flash and arrow where they're not like movie effects like they're these are in no way like movie level effects but in terms of like going like direct to dvd i think they got the job done there were only so many monsters or like demons that we saw uh for the first half of the movie all we saw were zombie scientists and they kind of suck. They kind of just looked like people with bad zombie makeup. But specifically the imp's costume, it was cute. It was fine. It, was, it wasn't good. It wasn't great um, or convincing at all. But it was a, a fun, schlocky B-movie costume. It looked like a rubber costume. And I think that was fun. Again, everything I liked about this movie was kind of like when it embraced being a B-movie. And kind of just had fun with the source material. I think the imp had fun with the costume. So I'll give it that. 
Uh, the CGI in Hell looked cool. It wasn't iconic or fiery or intense or anything, but it was an interesting direction to go. CGI wasn't, like, mind-blowing. Again, it's just sort of like, I think it got the job done. It could have been a lot worse. It could have been, like, food fight level CGI, I imagine. But, um, no, nah, you, you know, I for the fact that the, the final 15 minutes of the movie are the character walking around a CGI world, I think that they they did enough with it that it was fine. It was okay. The, the writing is so bad that when you see some half-decent CGI, you kind of go like, okay, fine, that's that's okay. Um, last thing I'll mention for effects is that there were weird cover-ups throughout the movie. Like, at one point, uh, Dr. Petruger is talking about how we need this key card. He shows a key card to the audience and how it, he's just saying exposition. Again, we're going back to exposition. And it's this really important shot but I guess something went wrong with the shot that day because there's a weird cover-up where they do a transition between that shot and then the same shot. You see the key card just kind of blur for a second and then, like, unblur. It was very strange. It wasn't, like, super noticeable, but, like, you kind of see it for a second. Like, I even went back just to look at it because, I, I, like, I saw it happen. It's just, like, weird stuff like that where it just kind of shows its budget. But, you know, I think all the technical aspects kind of took a backseat to how bad the characters and the writing were. Uh, let's move on to our final section. This one's a lot more, like, conceptual, but it's just... Why? Why it matters. So why does Doom Annihilation matter? And this is sort of just me kind of talking what this movie represents, why it was made, why I watched it, and why I'm talking about it to you now or why you should be interested, or like what this could mean for the future of movies. Um, I don't think that this movie is that dramatic, but um, I think it's, you know, just important that we kind of do like a little roundup, kind of understand what this movie is. Um, so I think Universal knew what they had by releasing this straight to DVD. It's not like a masterpiece at all. It works direct to DVD. I would have been pretty furious if I saw this movie in theaters. A movie budget might have improved the effects, but again, that wasn't really my issue. Like, I kind of admired how B-movie that stuff was. They might have gotten better actors with a bigger budget, but it never would have fixed what I actually had a problem with, which was the beyond horrible script and the boring direction. I think those things were just baked in. They were stuck with the director. Again, the director wrote and directed this, so both of those, I think, were faults of his own. And then talking about why this film matters, it matters as a ripoff of Alien that's 30 years too late. This movie matters as like a good example of not knowing what it wanted to be. I think we kind of take that for granted with good movies nowadays. Our favorite movies tend to be the ones that like know exactly what they wanted to be the entire time and they could commit to it. This movie never really gave the impression that it knew what it was doing. Uh, it wasn't action-y or fun enough to be a good representation of a Doom movie. Uh, it's not dramatic and scary enough to be a horror. It's too dumb to be a competent sci-fi movie. And it's too boring to be like a fun, schlocky B-movie. So I think this movie matters in the world as an example of something that doesn't really succeed at anything and doesn't really know what it wanted to be. Thinking conceptually, I think it's not impossible to make a good Doom movie. I think it's tough, uh, obviously, because everybody knows translating video games into movies isn't something that has a great track record. Being able to control and be the Doom guy in Doom and get to kill demons yourself is just something that's tough to capture when you're trying to watch a movie about a character on screen. Again, I don't think it's impossible. I just think that this movie definitely didn't go the right direction. This movie did not succeed in being a good Doom movie. I would not recommend this movie to anybody besides like hardcore Doom fans that just really want more content, but honestly, you're probably just better off playing the video games because this movie just is so, so boring. I guess I'll give it a score. So I guess I will go out and say this is a three out of 10. And finally, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching and making it all the way to the end. I am legitimately so grateful for your interest in what I had to say. Uh, 
there are already things that I'd like to improve on in the future in terms of trying to make more of these videos, but if you have any constructive criticism on what to improve, I'd love to read them in the comments. Again, this is my very first attempt, so I hope you'll bear with me a little bit. Uh, give me a little time to improve, but I had so much fun making this video. Uh, it's been sort of a dream of mine for the past couple years to try to do something like this, and the fact that I'm actually doing it just makes me so happy. Uh, so I'd also love to hear what you guys are watching and like what you want me to talk about. Honestly, like likes, shares, comments, just helping me grow is the kindest thing I could possibly ask for right now. So any way you can help me is beyond appreciated. So yeah, thanks again, and keep an eye out for more animations coming as soon as they can. This stuff takes a while, uh, but I promise I'm trying my best and just trying to have fun with it. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and I will see you very soon.